If you're planning a career in a transaction filtering or you're planning to move into this area of financial crime risks, in today's video I will talk to you about some duties and responsibilities you can expect once you are into the role as I've been doing this job for over four years back in my career. So let's get right into today's video. Hi and welcome to Fin Crime Agent. I'm Marco Beranzoni and on my YouTube channel we are talking about financial crime prevention and anti-money laundering topics. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button below and press the bell so you can get notified once new videos are going live on my channel. Also, check the description of this video where you can find useful links and you will find also the link to our Patreon page where with a small contribution you can support FinCrime Agent and receive notes from my videos as well as an original copy of the PowerPoint slides presented in the videos. So with the housekeeping out of the way let's move right into today's video. Okay, let's get started and talk about your career as a sanctions compliance officer. This is a very exciting role. I've been covering this role when I was working for financial institutions and it is a role with a great level of responsibility and it has uh, some uh, interesting aspect, some less interesting aspect, but still extremely important job to do as you will be on the first line of defense to detect and identify those economic sanctions, potential violations to help prevent financial crimes at economic sanctions level. Before we move into the details of the role as a compliance officer in transaction filtering, let's make a differentiation here between AML transaction monitoring and sanctions transaction filtering. Transaction filtering is purely referring to the screening of transactions against the sanctions list a financial institution is in scope to screen against. So there will be a system in place that will complete the screening of the transactions versus those lists in order to identify potential matches. Whereas in anti-money laundering, you're not monitoring the specific transaction against a list, but you are monitoring the customer activities in order to identify money laundering activities completed by the customer. So it's a different approach and a different perspective in how you're looking at the activities, it's still at a transactional level, but one area in AML, you are more into money laundering activities, whereas in economic sanctions, you are trying to match the details within the transactions versus the details that are available on those sanctions lists. There will be systems in place to do both the monitoring of customer activity in AML, transaction monitoring, as well as in transactions filtering. So we will focus only on the transaction filtering aspect today. Let's now get an understanding on the outcome of those investigations. So you know that there's going to be solutions in place to screen the traffic against the economic sanctions. And obviously out of the screening, there will be alerts generated that will be presented to the sanctions officer in order to understand if that potential match is a true match or not. Out of those alerts, once a sanction is then identified, if it can be 100% proven that is that entity, the sanctions will take place and therefore the funds involved in most cases will be blocked. In some of the cases when you cannot um, discount but you cannot even prove that is necessarily that sanctions. In most of the cases, the financial institution will decide to do a rejection of the transaction. So let's move into reviewing the outcome of those alerts. Let's start reviewing the rejected transaction. This is where we do not have 100% certainty that the match with the sanctions list is proven. So in this case, we've got a potential match and the transaction could most likely be rejected. If this was coming into the organization from another financial institution, the money will be sent back to that financial institution. If instead was an outbound from your customers, so you work within a financial institution and this was a payment initiated from your customers, the funds will probably 
get credit back into the customer account. They will probably be not reporting to the uh, local crime agency when you cannot 100% prove that there is a sanction uh, match confirmed from your filtering solution. If we now look at the block transaction, this is a different scenario because in this case, we've managed to prove there is a sanctions match identified from your systems. So in this instance, we, we are looking at transactions that have been confirmed to be a true match with a sanctions target. Because of this activity, the money involved will be transferred into a hold account and left there for indefinite period of time. Usually the enforcement agency will be notified of the sanctions match. So if, for example, there is a US dollar transaction that is blocked, the Office of Foreign Asset Control will be notified of the blocked transaction and the account where this money will be placed on hold. So no one will essentially have access to, to this money that are on hold and the funds will remain in this hold account for indefinite period of time or until that sanctions regime has dropped and there is no longer a sanctions for that targeted entity, state or individual. One of the most challenging aspects of working as a sanctions compliance officer is the volume of alerts that you are going to review. Because of the nature of transaction screening, there will be a volume of false positive that will be presented to the officer. So you would still need to review all of those alerts that are false positive. So there will not be actual investigation at the back of those ones. And in terms of volume, I'm referring generally in the region of 98 99% of your alerts could be false positives. As I was saying, this is the most challenging aspect of the role because you would be required to pay attention to all the alerts you are going to review to identify that very small percentage that is going to be an investigation at the back of that. Okay, the false positive we know is going to be a bit of a pain in the role, but you will need to deal with that and make sure that as a sanctions investigator, you will remain always alert to ensure that the proper escalation and action is taking place when a positive alert is presented by the screening solution. There are some techniques that during the years have been taking place to reduce the volume of false positives. And the first one that I wanted to list is white listing keywords. This is an old fashioned way to reduce the volume of false positive and is low in efficiency and high in risk. The reason why it's low in efficiency is because it's preventing true positive to be identified in some cases. You are essentially uh, blocking the alerts to be generated in the first place. And in this way, you are not going to see an audit of potential alerts that you could have missed. Whereas in more modern technologies that are in place, there are new systems that are more sophisticated and will allow you to implement a number of conditions that are working with rules on top of the alert. So alerts are still generated, but with those specific rules, you can work in a smarter way to reduce the volume of false positive that an investigator or an officer is presented to deal with. This is part one of the career in transaction filtering video. If you want to see the continuation of this video, just click the link right above. And with that, I'm at the end of today's video. I hope the information I shared are useful for you and that will help you to make the right decision if you want to have a career as a sanctions compliance officer. If you have any comments, please leave them at the bottom of this video. And remember to check the description of this video for some useful links. And in case you want to support the FinCrime agent, you will find the Patreon link there to be directed to the Patreon community on patreon.com, where you will receive some more material uniquely created for our patrons. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed and until next time, see you soon.